I'm liking that. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're gonna to have a look at something that I haven't made. But the mighty Jorg Sprav has made this one and it is the Instant Legolas. Now, you will have seen this before, but you haven't seen my take on it. Jorg has asked me to make one, make a medieval one, one that could have been. It's an interesting object, but I'm gonna look at it from my point of view, how I think it would fit into history and also how I could make it as a medieval artifact, how they could have done it. But before I do any of that, I haven't shot this thing, so I've got to go and shoot it and find out what the hell is the Instant Legolas all about. Shoots fast. Great, I get that. Let's see what it does. I like that. What a thing. What a thing. That's fun. Uh, uh, genuinely, it's really fun, actually. Right, let's go again. And we're going to go for accuracy this time. But I must say, actually, that the fun of this thing for me, the fun of this thing really was about the speed. But you know, accuracy is an interesting one because longbows, as far as I understand it, I don't know, it's just perceived wisdom, maybe it's not true, shouldn't be held at full draw for very long. Maybe it damages them, maybe that's just something we all know, but actually we don't. I don't know. This is fun. This is, I do, I get it. I get it. Okay, yours, I get it. Now, looky there. Let's just spin that around. Sights, huh? I always thought they're overrated. So we're low and we're right, but you know, you can adjust that with the sights. It's only the second time I've ever shot the bloody thing. But look at that for a grouping. So we're at about 10 meters and that is seven or eight centimeters. 10 yards, three inches, five shots. That's quite impressive, actually. Hmm, food for thought. Well, I'm gonna see if I can do that again. Let's have a look. I'm liking that. So that was fast, so there's no hanging about with that. Third time I shot the bow, just check out that group. I like to tell things how it is. I don't like to fluff it about. I've been thinking about this thing and what I think of it and what I'm gonna to say to camera. This is kind of changing what I'm gonna to say to camera a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, so let's go back and sit down and we'll think about it. I've shot Jorg Sprav's Instant Legolas now. It was fun. I mean, genuinely, it was fun. And I think actually, I didn't have any doubt that it was gonna be fun because things that shoot fast are always fun. And it does that and I love it. And then I used the sights that you all put on there. And I must say, in my head, I was pretty scathing at putting sights on a longbow. Uh, it's just not what longbow is all about. However, I got a really good group with the first time uh, I shot the sights. I'm not sure I'd want to hold my longbow full draw for five seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds, but for a couple of seconds, long enough to get a bead on something. Yeah, they worked. You saw the group I got. I think we probably all know it anyway, but Jorg is a master of wood engineering. It's, it's beautifully done. But not only that, there's some really clever little features here. So for instance, you know, I've got my five bolts, I get carried away. I'm still shooting. Well, I can't load it now because there's no bolts in here. There's just a little hook on the magazine primer and that stops the string from going past it. So if you've got an empty magazine, you can't shoot this bow anymore. It's great, you can't dry fire it. Trigger could not be simpler. Military, civilian, any kind of context generally love simplicity. One of the things that does need changing is bolt weight. Now, this is only a piddly little 30, 35 pound bow, and it can shoot 14 gram arrows without hurting it. My one, 95 pound long bow, I'll test it up and fit it up for that, shoots 44 gram arrows, or thereabouts. So three times the weight. I can't shoot these light ones from it. It'll damage it, It'll damage the bow. So, you know, we've got to medievalize the arrows, beef them up. Something I have found awkward with the Instant Legolas is here, how the bow is connected. It's just lashed on. That makes it a little bit awkward because it means it's not a permanent fixture, but it's difficult for you to put it on quickly. So I'm gonna have a look at that. And then the other is that the slot for the string here 
That has no out for the string. That means you have to pass the string through the slot and then put it onto the bow. For a light bow, it's a little bit awkward, but you can do it. For a heavy bow, I think this would be a bit difficult. You could do it with a stringer, but it just makes everything a little bit harder. Back at the range now, and the instant Legolas has changed. So I've added this kid's cheap fiberglass bow here. And this is part of what Jorg is looking at doing. He's looking at a uh, very good idea, really, physiologically, you know, biomechanically, it makes sense that you are preloading the system on the push because you have the ability to do it, but that's not utilized. Uh, not in normal drawing of a bow, but of course this is not a normal bow. So you've got the magazine slider that goes forward and that pushes onto the assist bow. What that means is by the time you're at full draw length, actually this bow, the little kiddie bow here, is applying quite a lot of offset, if you like, to this. The idea being if I can draw a 95 pound bow as it is. If I mount my long bow in here, I can draw 95. Wouldn't it be great if I could draw 120 or 130? And this bow here will offset the 130 pound and turning it effectively as far as my pulling ability is concerned into a 95. Did that make any sense at all? Anyway, what it means now is instead of 35 pounds that this bow was, the little fiberglass bow is giving an offset. So it just loads as you normally would load it, but I'm pushing a bit now. But you know, it's not onerous, it's not difficult. And now it feels like I'm pulling a 25 or a 20. That same principle will work for a heavier bow. But here is the big problem. And this is the medieval material problem. This fiberglass modern material bow is having to work at about 38 inches of draw length to do this. And it's not giving a hell of a lot of offset. Not at this point. It does do it, the theory's all there. And this bow will do it a lot better than a medieval one. You know, a short bow like this with medieval materials, 38 inch draw length, I've no idea how I'm gonna do that. And that really is what the challenge is. So whatever is gonna happen with this bow will have to be really clever medieval wise, it really will. And that's where the assist system might well fall down in a medieval context. You can do it in modern context using rubber or whatever, Jorg's shown that. Can you do it in a medieval context? Because if you can't, the whole assist system just falls down. And if I can't do the assist system, then what I will do is, you know, I'll just confess, I'll fess up to it. I will make the instant legolas as it stands without the assist system. And, you know, there's no shame in that. It is, I am surprised to say, a great weapon. It is not perhaps the longbow that you would expect. It's other, it is another thing. This is not a longbow, don't think of it like a longbow. It has a longbow at its heart, but that is not what it is. It is a different kind of a weapon. And it would be deployed, it would have been deployed in different ways. So for instance, you can use a longbow. Yeah, it's difficult, but you can use it on a ship. This would be an even harder thing to use on a ship, all right? So it wouldn't work there. But street fighting down, uh, you know, the Battle of St. Albans, for instance, this could well have been an absolute killer you know it really could have been very useful in a situation like that or holding horses back at a ford where you've got 30 or 40 yards that you want to hold them back and you just need to ladle in the firepower into that brilliant you know 50 guys in the in the woods with these things you've seen how it shoots you know it is good oh that's just my two there sorry fast it's fast and it's powerful enough and if we can beef up the weight of the bolts and the arrows, if we can beef that up, if we can turn this into a 100 pound bow, if we could give the assist and turn it into 130 or 140, that becomes a very interesting thing. Will it replace the longbow in medieval warfare? I think probably not, it is, it is more complicated. There is a simplicity that will never be beaten over the longbow, you can't get any more simple. Would it replace it? Well, I think not. Would it have a role Yes, I think it would. And when I've made this and I've really thought it through and I've justified it to myself, I'll come back and I'll justify it to you and that will explain the role that I think that it would have filled. And in the meantime, you know what? I'm gonna spend my evenings playing around with this because if nothing else, it's fun. But intellectually, it's a really interesting object, actually. There's more than just the surface fun about this. There's a bigger thing at play here. Um, 
hopefully you'll come along for the journey. <laughs>